tonight. I'm sure you're all wondering what this board is for. So you might remember earlier tonight, you were asked to write down a three-digit number as you entered and to post them on this board. Well, tonight, Raghav and I are going to do a little demonstration just to make it clear to you what this magic is that we're talking about. I'm going to pick two numbers at random, and I'm going to ask Raghav to multiply them without assistance in his head. So, Raghav, what is 333 multiplied by 974? Sorry, can you repeat it? That's OK. 333 multiplied by 974. Um, 324342. Three, three, Is that correct? <laughs> OK. First equation, possibly a fluke. So let's try once more, shall we? How about 456 multiplied by 846? That's 456 multiplied by 846. 385776. <laughs> okay, finally, last part of the demonstration. Let's try something slightly more difficult. What about 222 divided by 999? 0 0.2222. <laughs> Everybody, Raghav Rahul Manaharan. How do you do this? It's a question I'm often asked. To answer this question, I need to tell you a story and give you some perspective into how it came to be. It was about 14 years ago that I saw my grandfather reading a newspaper. He was quite engrossed in it, actually. And being a, being a young kid, I was curious to know what he was reading. I happened to see the letters in bold, A, B, A, C, U, S. And immediately, I was confused. So I walked away. A few moments later, I happened to see my mother and my grandfather have a conversation about this. Meanwhile, I did what any good kid does. I fell asleep. <laughs> and when I reawoke, I found myself in a room with a teacher and a few other students who appeared more or less my age. I was told that I was going to learn math. Immediately, an instrument with beads plonked down in front of me, the abacus, which I laid my hands on. It was my first communion with maths. I was told that it was used to add and subtract, and I dutifully learned how to add and subtract single-digit numbers. The beads at the top of the rod was five, and each bead at the bottom of the rod was one. Initially, I wasn't really comfortable with the abacus method, as I often got confused between the new abacus method and the school carryover method, which meant my accuracy suffered. And being, a young, being an impatient young kid, I wanted to discontinue the course. However, my mother knew the value of this course greatly, and she pushed me to continue. And today, I have no problem in saying that she was right to do so. It was then I changed gear. I decided I would become resolute. I became diligent in my practice and followed what my teachers said. And eventually, I became more comfortable using the abacus. Then, once I became more comfortable, I progressed to the next level, where I started to add and subtract single-digit numbers using a visual model of the abacus, which included just the rods and not the beads, helping me simulate the motion of the beads in my mind. These beads 
became images floating in the space of my mind. And I gradually progressed to adding and subtracting two-digit numbers. Finally, the D-Day arrived, the day I dreaded the most, a regional abacus competition. Months of hard work had boiled down to this very day. Sweaty palms, butterflies in my stomach, much like now. <laughs> I had five minutes to complete as many questions as I could. The atmosphere was electrifying, and the countdown for the timer had begun. Five, four, three, two, one. And I remember having completed about 18 questions in the five minutes I was given. I felt confident that I could win a prize later in the presentation ceremony, or the prize distribution, as they called it. However, in the evening, I discovered that I hadn't won. It was at this moment in time I realized, true, I didn't win. But from being where I was, to hardly getting a few questions right, to having achieved 100% accuracy in the competition, I was proud of myself. And I learned an important lesson. Don't compete with others, but compete with yourself. Fast forward six years later, the D-Day arrived once again. This time around, I had completed the final level of the course. Grand Module C. Grand Module C. It's as serious as it sounds. But I was excited for being recognized for completing the course. And I, but I was working for, towards a bigger goal to win a regional abacus competition, not just for myself, but for my granddad, who happened to be under medical supervision on the same day. This time around, though, I had three rounds, a five-minute abacus round, a three-minute visual round, and a three-minute multiplication division round. Students were frantically moving their beads. The atmosphere was exhilarating. And just before I knew it, the competition was done. I was confident, but had a long wait to endure before I found out the results of the competition. The prize distribution had begun in the evening. Prize winners from Podium Place had been announced. I was slowly losing hope, and I started to walk away in disappointment. The second prize winner was announced. I was ready to leave, but then I heard my name. Somehow, I had done it. I was the champion. Tears ran down my face. My teacher rushed to the stage. The moment I had longed for had finally arrived. My grandfather was proud of me, and he gave me a tight hug. Finally, I managed to achieve some success. And it was at this moment in time I realized the value of the years of effort I had invested. So, what does it all boil down to? Simply this. I'm not a genius, at least not in my mind. I can multiply reasonably big numbers, and for many, this is seen as magic. But it's not. What my story hopefully shows you is that you can train the space in your mind, alter its geography, if you will, to perform such feats. What works is perseverance and grit. Sounds trite, but it works. I'm living proof. So that is my message. Thank you.